Welcome back. We've got the AFR heads up on the bench here. Got the new head gaskets there. Motor's all cleaned up. We're going to get these on and put the tunnel ram back on. Then we'll work on the ladder bars as well. All in this episode. We got some nice head gaskets here. Got one of the AFRs is setting on there. We're looking up the AFR bolt torque sequence and torque spec, which it says it's 70 pounds. And then the sequence is the same for all small blocks. All the head bolts going through the water jackets. You want those to have a little bit of thread sealer on them. And then the other bolts, ARP wants you to use their special lubricant that they send you with the bolts. While I was doing the torque pattern on the HUD, Dad was getting busy putting the push rods and rocker arms on the driver's side. We're going to continue to keep putting those in. Daddy, you want to tell us what we're going to do with these guide plates? Well, we got adjustable guide plates on here, which are kind of a pain because we put them in here and we're going to snug up the stud a little bit just so it touches. Then we have to center the rocker arm on the stem of the valve here. And at the same time, center this plate. And then once we get it centered, you got to snug it up so that it don't move and then we're going to have to go through and torque all of them and hope they don't move. So this is going to be a slow, tedious process here. We're going to take our time so we get it right and we won't have any valve train problems hopefully. Alright, we got the intake gaskets on. Some big old holes in them suckers. And we got the Great Wall of China of sealant right here, front and back. Now the tunnel ram is ready to go on. They clean these headers up for me. They're all polished, nice and clean. Um, because for this race, I'm not gonna be running the full exhaust system all the way back. I'm gonna tune it and set it up so it's good for just wide open headers. That way when we're at the track, it's gonna run the best that way. These are the Sanderson Tri-5 headers, if any of y'all are wondering. Um, they fit pretty well. There's a lot of room left in there, uh, but I did build a custom frame up front. So if you're wanting to do the same thing, then these work good and they give you a lot of space for steering boxes, all that stuff. Um, no issues there. Uh, they're also nice because they don't require a header gasket. All they say to do is put a little bit of RTV on here and then let it set up for about five minutes and then stick it on and it seals up really good. So my header bolts here, just putting a lot of NICs on them because now they're going into an aluminum block. I had NICs on them before, but it's just important when you're putting regular old steel bolts into aluminum that you do have a lot of anti-seize on there so you don't get any corrosion and run into any problems when you're going to take them back out.
Okay, we got the headers on. Basically full intake, everything's all set up now. Got a little bit more wiring to do, and then I gotta put my tilt front end back on. But for now, we're gonna put it back up on the hoist. I gotta hook up the trans lines, the shift cables, and then we're getting started on the ladder bars. But first step to getting these ladder bars done, they got these safety loops through the front of them. That way, if you're if they're hanging up in the front and you break a bolt or a heim joint and it swings down, it doesn't catch the track and pole vault you into oblivion. So we got to get these kind of shaped and fit on here. Checkered Racing sent these over with the ladder bars, with all the brackets and all the hardware. So they're making it easy on me. All I got to do is a little trimming on the inside of these to make them fit. And then we'll tack those into place. And we're going to start working on our front mounts. For the ladder bars which i'm guessing are going to be right in this area in the frame between the two pieces of roll cage i got the safety loops all welded on to the ladder bars now Dad cut the flanges off of the front ladder bar brackets. I'm gonna mount them like this on it's just a two by four. Weld them in the correct gap. And then tack them onto this piece of two by four. Two by four. We're gonna run all the way to the top of the frame for good support. And then we'll probably cut it flush wherever and cap it off. So it was 115 inches. What we did was we held the ladder bar, mounted up to its bracket, up to the rear end like this. And we measured from the center of the axle tube forward to the center of this bolt while it's clamped into our bracket. That measurement we subtracted from 115, and then we subtracted the measurement from the front of this bracket to the center of the eye hole. You can see our two marks on the frame over here. So this is our first mark where we got the eye hole distance, and then this is the front of the bracket. So when we put the front of the bracket on, we run it up to the top of the frame and keep that square with that line. And then our wheelbase should be within, you know, maybe a quarter of an inch off. And then we're gonna, we have adjustment in the heim joint, so we should be good. A couple episodes ago I made these lower shock mounts that go to the axle and then we just got a spacer in between there hold it that way the coilover doesn't hit it. So right now I'm going to lay these under the truck, tack weld them to the axle, 
and then I'll make the upper shock mount. Here we have the lower shock mounts tack welded to the axle. Then I used to have a C notch in my frame, so went ahead and boxed in the outside. I'm going to box it in the rest of the way after I finish weld this roll cage bar that we got tacked in right now. So we're going to lift this thing back up on the hoist, do a little bit more welding and grinding. And then Dad's going to be cutting out some upper shock tabs that are going to mount to the roll cage and through this top bolt hole of the coilover. And uh, then she'll be sitting on her own. Where are you going? Oh, there you are. I don't know what you're doing. You gotta run the welder over. Yeah. Yeah, you should just go down the track like that, dude. I'm not that fast. Oh, that'd be cool. Alright, I'm gonna blow her this thing down. Alright, we're tucked back in underneath the truck with it down. Got it on these jack stands, this kind of get a uh, pretty close ride height there for us. Now we're gonna put these brackets up against the roll cage tubing that we just put in and tack them in. Two straight days, about 10 hours a day out in the garage. Finally got all this stuff tacked together, not even fully welded. Well, it's a moment of truth. I'm gonna jack this thing up, pull out the jack stands, and then set it down. What do you think, Dad? I think I'm tired and I got COVID. <laughs> Everything is all stripped down. It's time to weld these front ladder bar brackets in, pull ladder bars off of here, weld all the brackets for the shocks, all that stuff on the truck and on the axle, get everything painted and put it back together for the last time. Picked up the drive shaft today too. Uh, it's up here. This one got shortened. I had it made last year, but like I said, my tail shaft was three inches longer, so I had to shorten this one three inches. <laughs> so much done in the past couple of weeks all thanks to my family especially my dad uh, my girlfriend my mom my little brother everyone who's came over and this lent a hand to get stuff unbolted or dragged out of the truck whatever um, thanks couldn't have done it without all you guys we're getting right around the corner from starting this thing up so we're gonna end this episode and then in the next episode you'll get to hear the truck fire up with the new aluminum heads you'll get to see the debut of it rolling down the street with the the ladder bars and uh then after that you'll see us at norwalk drag racing so thanks for watching <laughs>